welcome and thanks for joining. Today we're taking a look at the management pack for SolarWinds NPM, uh, part of the VMware vRealize True Visibility Suite. Uh, so we're starting off in the documentation. Uh, so first thing we want to look at uh, is any sort of system requirements. I uh, want to point out this is only uh, for SolarWinds, only available in the Enterprise Edition of vRealize Operations. Uh, so we have the uh, standard or advanced would need, uh, would need to upgrade uh, to the Enterprise Edition. A couple of the on uh, versioning here, uh, software versions 10.4 plus or the Orion REST API uh, 2.0 plus. Uh, this does collect via uh, port uh, 17778. Uh, that can be changed, but that's the uh, the default port there. Uh, and as far as a, a least privileged user here, uh, there, there are no special privilege, uh, privileges that need to be added. Uh, even a guest user uh, would be fine in order to, to access the, uh, the data coming out. Uh, I also want to point out the using the Manjo pack section, uh, where it does have a, a, a diagram here for the resource types and resource kinds uh, and the relationships. Uh, so it shows all of our all the relationships here, as well as any external relationships uh, that it might have. Uh, want to also point out this could go directly uh, to Cisco uh, networking switches or Cisco Blade or Rack servers uh, directly to the node. And this also does have then a list of the dashboards uh, that are in this manager pack as uh, we're going to show these in vRealize operations so we'll uh, skip that for now uh, but that does also have a list of the reports uh, the views that are used uh, the alerts uh, that are out of the box uh, as well as the uh, metrics uh, that are out of the box as well so all of these are going to be then uh, broken down into their resource type we can see the top here is fiber channel ports uh, but if we scroll down, we're going to see we have nodes, uh, all the various uh, other pieces we can pull out uh, depending on the uh, uh, the object type. Jumping into uh, vRealize here, we have uh, where we can input our information. This is the one I've already got configured. Uh, so we have our, our name, uh, a description if you'd like, and our host name here. Uh, credential, again, is just... Uh, what we talked to uh, username and password really any solar winds user would be fine here uh, and then uh, under the advanced settings we have a few different options uh, we have the auto discovery here uh, we can change our default port or the, the port we're pulling information from and then we can turn uh, kind of turn on and off some things here so we have, have, have nodes uh, fiber channel units ports sensors uh, and in each of these i'll have a drop down we can either say we want resource and events uh, just the resources or have those off. So if we didn't want to connect uh, anything or to collect anything on our fiber channel units, we could turn those off completely uh, if that's something we wanted to do. And then the last, uh, we have our, our res uh, relationship collection time. So this is when uh, VRealize Operations is going to make our relationships. Uh, so if anything is moving around or changing, uh, we can change the time frame uh, that, it's, that it's on there. Taking a look at some of our SolarWinds dashboards, uh, I always like to start uh, with the most general here uh, with the overview screens. Uh, this is just showing uh, heat maps. Uh, we're kind of showing on uh, based on uh, health and also uh, looking at uh, the various pieces here. So we have our nodes, our VLAN nodes, uh, fiber channel units, ports, uh, sensors, our wireless clients, controllers, and access points, uh, and anything on uh, the vSAN side of things. Uh, from there, I, I, we can go to uh, the NPM health investigation. So we're looking at uh, all of our alerts that are coming in. Uh, so it looks like we've got some interfaces that are down, quite a few that are down here at the moment. And if we, we click on those, we can then see our relationships here, see the other pieces that it's affecting, uh, and then look through our KPIs uh, on the right-hand side, as well as the topology and kind of how everything fits together uh, on the bottom right. Uh, from here, we can go and look at the uh, kind of the top 10. So we can look at the, at our top 10 list. Uh, we've only got one wireless uh, client going on here, but uh, it normally would show uh, kind of the uh, everything that was there. And we can look at our data rates there, uh, response times, packet loss on our nodes, uh, look at through our node uh, traffic, uh, look through our access points, uh, CPU load on our nodes, uh, so on and so forth. If we have multiple environments, uh, we could then uh, pick here instead, uh, pick the environment we wanted to look at. We've only got the one environment, so we've only got one showing up here. If we also go, we can then look at uh, look at our SolarWinds environment uh, based on OS. 
uh, if we have a service of discovery turned on, we can look at that by uh, VM, uh, or we can look at that by host. Uh, so things are going to change a little bit if we do that. So if we pick a, a virtual machine, we're going to get our node there. We're going to get our topology as well. And then we can look through at the various uh, KPIs on the, all the pieces. Uh, or if we do that by uh, host, uh, the same thing. We'll just uh, switch or by host instead of a virtual machine instead now. And the last one is going to be any of the uh, KPIs. So we, we're, we can choose uh, to, as we look through our entire uh, SolarWinds estate, uh, we can choose and look at our uh, wireless access points, our VLAN nodes, uh, our nodes, and these will change as we as we click through those. We'll be able to see health and some of the KPIs, and if there's any alerts on that particular object we've we've selected there. So once we've added multiple manager packs into our cluster, we can move from a view like this, looking at our VM data store and host, to something more like this. We can see that the same virtual machine is still the focal point, but off of the data store, we can now see the three-part virtual volume and the common provisioning group it's a part of. We can see the SQL Server instance. We can see the databases within that instance, all of the queries, the SQL jobs, and the wait types. We can also see the Cisco Nexus switch, uh, as well as the ports that are on that switch. We can take a look at our F5 Big IP load balancer. We can look at our IIS web server, application pools, websites, applications, and virtual directories. On the left side of our virtual machine, we can see not only the host, but the Cisco UCS blade, the fabric interconnects, and even the chassis itself. Once we have dashboards that can help us with the relationships within our stack, we can start to build out some custom dashboards that can help out with troubleshooting or allow us to be more proactive in our approach. We can correlate our data and use this information to visualize the stack from applications down through the compute layer, the networking layer, and down into the physical storage we're utilizing.